Welcome to Canadian Justice. I'm Christine Van Gyne, and today we're talking about severance law in Canada. What are employees entitled to and what are employer obligations when an employee is let go without cause? How should employees approach severance negotiations with their employers and what can employers do to avoid getting sued? Today we will be answering these questions and examining a recent high profile case of severance, a $130 million lawsuit against the company Shopify for alleged attempts to slash post layoff severance pay. Today, for this practical and timely conversation, we're joined by two lawyers, Danica McClellan and Mackenzie Irwin. And Mackenzie is with the law firm that is leading the case against Shopify. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Uh, before getting into the details of that Shopify case, let's talk about some of the basics of severance. Uh, Danica, is, is severance mandatory? Yes, in short. Um, when you're terminated or if you terminate an employee without cause, that employee is entitled to what is otherwise called notice, termination notice. That's either working notice or pay in lieu of notice. And in you know the common terms, we call it severance pay often. And, and Mackenzie, what determines how much severance will be paid in these scenarios where employees are terminated without cause? We're not talking in this case about people who were let go for uh, for cause, which is can be quite a high standard to, to meet. But we are talking about these cases where uh, there are, for example, mass layoffs for for no fault of the employee's own. So so, yeah, so, so what determines how much that is going to be? Yeah, so the first step that you would take is really to look to see whether there's an enforceable termination clause in that employee's uh, employment contract. Recent case law has really made the vast majority of those termination clauses illegal and unenforceable. And so even if your employment contract has a termination clause, you should be having it reviewed. But if there's no enforceable termination clause, your full severance is really based on what we call the common law. And the common law takes into consideration your, um, your age, your years of service, the position you held, uh, the availability of comparable positions out there. And it could really be up to 24 months of pay. And, and Danica, there's also the Employment Standards Act, which vary across provinces. Uh, those set out some of the minimum standards. So what can you tell me about the minimum standards, what they are, and how often is it that an employee would be offered, you know, what the minimum is under the Employment Standards Act versus seeking something perhaps greater under the common law? That's a great question. I work with a lot of employers in my practice, and this is something that I think is the most commonly misunderstood component of an employment contract. I'll have employers come to me all the time and say, well, I paid this employee what the Employment Standards Act or the Employment Standards Code, depending on your province, said to pay them. And I have to then have tough conversations sometimes and say, well, unfortunately, that's not that's not where the conversation ends. And so the Employment Standards Act or code or, or Saskatchewan Employment Act, every province has a different legislation. Um, those are really the starting point. And an employer, if they have a properly drafted termination clause, um, I know in Ontario, especially that's tougher these days uh, than some other provinces. Um, if you have a properly drafted termination clause, you can limit the amount of notice to what's contained in those Employment Standards Acts. Again, every province is different. Uh, usually it's it's a, a few weeks, up to a few more than a few weeks, depending on, on your years of service with the employer. But I would really caution employers and employees that the, the termination provision is, is what I think is the most important part of any employment contract. Um, not because when someone hires an employee, they're anticipating terminating that employee, right? No one hires someone with the goal of wanting to fire them later. But it saves everybody a lot of heartache and time and money in the long run if that termination clause is really clear and unambiguous about what the parties are going to get at the end of that relationship. Mackenzie, we've only got about 30 seconds. Anything you want to add to that conversation about the Employment Standards Act? Yeah, and so I, I, I agree. It, it really just is the starting point. It sets out the bare minimums, but you shouldn't take that at face value. If your employer has paid you the minimums, uh, you're likely entitled to much more and, and you should have it reviewed by an employment lawyer, any severance package so that you can determine whether it truly represents what you're truly owed.
All right, we've got to go to commercial break now, but when we come back, we're going to con continue this conversation about severance law in Canada in employment context. We'll be right back.